Welcome to The Bright Side, a show where we shed light on the people, places, and stories that make Michigan great. Hi, I'm Carolyn Bloodworth, your host for today's episode about AmeriCorps in Michigan. AmeriCorps is a program funded by the Michigan Community Service Commission, an organization which I have the honor of serving as chair. Today we're at Harner Park Garden House in Lansing, where AmeriCorps members are teaching the neighbors about healthy lifestyles and growing food. AmeriCorps is a national service program where members provide intense, results-driven service to thousands of individuals in need by dedicating a year of their life in service. AmeriCorps members help people all over the state in almost any way you can imagine, mentoring youth, growing food, building affordable homes, and improving local communities. Today we will take a first-hand look at what AmeriCorps looks like in Michigan where members are serving and how they're positively impacting communities throughout the state. Our first video introduces you to the AmeriCorps program. We will meet key stakeholders in the programs as well as past and present members of Michigan's AmeriCorps. I'm an AmeriCorps member with the Urban Safety Project out of Wayne State University in Detroit. I am AmeriCorps Vista serving with the United Way at the Southeast Michigan site. AmeriCorps member, a part of the Michigan Foreclosure Prevention Corps. I'm an AmeriCorps member with the Power of We Consortium. I'm an AmeriCorps and I'm stationed out of uh, Grand Rapids. And I serve at the American Red Cross. Gleaners Community Food Bank in Southeast Michigan. Michigan Primary Health Care Association. AmeriCorps is an opportunity for people to serve their country. We have many people in America that want to serve their country and their nation. Why not serve as an AmeriCorps member, serving locally for your local community to address and respond to local community challenges and needs? When I heard that AmeriCorps you know, was about just building the city you know, or different regions of the city, I went ahead and said, you know, this could be a good experience for me. This could be something good for my resume. This could be good you know, for me to contribute back to Detroit. But as I, the months passed, I started to think like, I'm doing more than just building the structure, the physical structure of Detroit. I'm actually interacting with these people in a positive way. I just don't think there are many other experiences I could have had that could have been so, with such breadth of enrichment, personally and professionally, in my life. I mean, we're not heroes, but we are people volunteering our time full-time to just help out the community and do something for America. The AmeriCorps is absolutely central to all of this because they're the people that are on the ground doing the actual organizing of the block clubs. Without the AmeriCorps, we would not have been able to do our business promotion. We would not have been able to do our community-based uh, organization promotion. The AmeriCorps members are instrumental to the success of our program. Through the AmeriCorps, we are able to provide services to more families. You get an education where that's a big thing too, so on top of the volunteer work, you get the education to help you. I definitely want to stay in community work and non-for-profit. I'm applying to Wayne State, Wayne State University grad school, social work grad school, so I'll use my education award for that. So that's right on time. I think out of the dozen or so members in total that have served here, we've had four go on to join our staff after their service was completed. Definitely, this is something worth putting on a resume. Um, I think that I've gained so much from it. It helped me to decide that this is what I want to do. And out of where I did my AmeriCorps in 1995, I ran for and was elected to the state legislature in 2002 um, uh, to represent Southwest Detroit. So I've really had some incredible opportunities over the last 20 years and, and frankly it, it really did uh, start with AmeriCorps for me. I had uh, grew up in the state but had left for college and worked in Washington DC, came back from grad school but the first job I had here in the state of Michigan and the first time I really ever hung out in the city of Detroit was through the AmeriCorps program. It's an entire package, and I certainly hope that it's around for others to have the kind of opportunities that I had. While AmeriCorps programs can focus on a variety of issues, one program, AmeriCorps VISTA, is focused specifically on poverty. 
AmeriCorps VISTA has been in existence for nearly 50 years and engages members across the country in fighting the causes of poverty. In Michigan, more than 200 individuals are dedicating their time to AmeriCorps VISTA service this year, including the members in this next video. The AmeriCorps VISTA program is one of several volunteer programs supported by the Corporation for National and Community Service, a federal agency dedicated to improving lives and communities through service and volunteering. VISTA members serve throughout the United States and in Michigan. And you're becoming an AmeriCorps member today. Yes. Today we had the privilege of providing an orientation training to approximately 35 freshly minted AmeriCorps VISTA summer associates. I really enjoyed the opportunity to volunteer through the AmeriCorps Vistas. Um, it helped me to be able to, to come into an area where children who are in need. I'm serving in the AmeriCorps program because this is my home community. I grew up just outside of Flint. Um, and I have a year until law school and I thought a year of service would be a great way to spend it. Vista gives me a perfect opportunity to see, get my feet wet to see if this is something I would like to do long term. And so far I'm enjoying it. I love it to death. I have much, a lot more joy from doing this than for the past 10, 11, 12 years doing retail management. We have Vista Summer Associates serving all over the United States. Flint has the distinction, the happy distinction, of being one of the largest summer associate cities in terms of Vistas placed in the entire country. Without them, we would not be able to serve as many kids as we do serve. So it's, it's been a joy to have, it's been a huge benefit to the City of Flint and the Boys and Girls Club, so we're really excited to have the Summer Associates here this year. It's so difficult when we don't have enough folks to really match up with the kids and spend the individual one-on-one -on -one time, but when we have a program like the VISTA program, each one of those volunteers is trained and mentoring and can really spend quality time with the young people and, and really be the type of people that can change the trajectory of a kid's life. After this, I plan on putting on my resume. Hopefully, I can continue into the four-year program and then continue to my career in athletics, hopefully. So that's the goal. This is my second year. So I, last summer, I did really enjoy it. And like because of this program, it actually helped me change my um, major in college as well. I've had a couple of the VISTAs talk to me about changing their majors uh, into doing more community-based work and how else they can contribute to improving the quality of life for the people in their community. We've been promoting the summer feeding sites uh, in the southeast Michigan region um, and it's correlated to the free and reduced lunch program that students get throughout the school year. Once they leave school, they miss out on that lunch that they get during school. So what we try and do is help the children that don't get as much food during the summer, we try and feed them. For some of these families, that's 400 bucks a month that they could possibly be saving by utilizing these programs that they may or may not know exist. Well, the site here today that we're at uh, already told us that they doubled the number of kids that they had at any day uh, during the summer. So that's one of the ways that we're able to improve the number of children that are being fed through this work. I'm starting to see like how important the things that we do, how important our outreach really is, and how it can really help someone in need. Being able to go out into areas that I wasn't too familiar with before and learn how to communicate with different types of people has definitely been a benefit that I've received from being a VISTA. I get everything you just said, leadership skills, confidence, job experience, being around all these kids and their happy faces and their laughter and their smiles, you feel that and it makes you actually want to get into it more and just see what you, how much more you can do for your community. For our next video, we'll head to Grand Rapids where Michigan's AmeriCorps members are part of the solution to Kent County's educational crisis. Through their service, AmeriCorps members in the Schools of Hope program are helping young students and their parents to increase their literacy skills as well as their chance for future educational success. Family literacy is the idea that learning is most effective when it takes place with parents as well as kids. 
We know that low literacy tends to be cyclical within families. If you see kids who are struggling readers, often their parents struggled and their parents as well. In our case, the Literacy Center through our AmeriCorps teachers is providing ESL instruction to the adults. The reason why I joined the AmeriCorps, I mean there's several reasons. Uh, one of them was I really became interested in helping to solve the literacy gap that exists in our community. When I heard about the program, it kind of all came together as a way for me to gain my experience uh, teaching adult ESL, but also um, sort of with a mission of uh, helping to um, elevate the, the reading levels in our community and empower um, individuals in our community who uh, sometimes uh, can struggle because of language barriers. Oh, was it hard to live here not knowing much English? I, it was very hard. It was, it was just, you get all uh, frustrated because you go in places that uh, you hear people talking and you don't even know what, what they're saying. Then uh, I hear about the uh, uh, English classes, which you sometimes or don't have time or just afraid to go because you go like English, nah, English is not for me. But then you don't know how easy it is until you get there. And today teachers and people explain you how everything goes. So like what I say, picking up English like little by little, word by word every day, then you get in there. It's really good to see the students meet their goals, uh, to see them progress and uh, become empowered and um, more confident members of the community. It's a powerful sight to see your parents trying to improve themselves. I got three boys and a girl. They, they speak English and we uh, speak Spanish at home. It's awesome to, to, to speak English now. I mean, it, it's. It's, yeah, I can help them with that um, homework. I can be with them at school conferences and stuff, which before um, I have to wait for a translator, you know, and not just school, but some other clinics, hospitals and stuff. Yeah, now we, we don't have to wait that much. We have to I be able to help them in school and talk to the teachers and watch a movie with them, you know, in English. Last year, um, actually over 230 adults were uh, participate in our family literacy program. And what we're finding is that when kids' parents participate in our program, about 70% of those kids are able to meet their on-target reading growth, whereas when kids' parents do not complete our program, only about 50% of those kids are making their reading growth. So we're not only impacting the adults, but it's having effect on the kids as well. Now we head to Detroit, where members of the Wayne State University AmeriCorps Urban Safety Program are helping to create a safer Detroit through vital neighborhood revitalization projects and more. Our major priority is to minimize crime in the Midtown or Wayne State area. The way we do that is by organizing block clubs. Uh, block clubs create a united front. It gives people um, a sense of unity and it's, it gives them a voice. Neighborhoods that don't look so nice are easier targets and that encourages a lot of crime and it encourages people to act ways that they wouldn't otherwise act in nicer neighborhoods. So what we're doing is helping them clean up the neighborhood. We're doing a board up and we're doing a cleanup of the area. We're gonna have a barbecue afterwards, uh, basically getting the community out, get involved. People out here um, cleaning up my block, so I just came out and just wanted to help too, you know? It'd be better looking when we finished with it, you know, all the grass cut and everything. I just moved here, the idea of getting involved with the city, meeting people, um, helping out and seeing what the city's all about, you know? It's, it's very surprising that people are getting together and doing this, it's good. In the Midtown area around the university, we've reduced crime by 38% across the last three years, 
And when you cost that out, that's a savings of nearly $49 million across that period. The AmeriCorps is absolutely central to all of this because they're the people that are on the ground doing the actual organizing of the block clubs on a day-to-day -day basis. A lot of these people, they don't know their neighbors on either side or front and back, you know? And we kind of make that bridge to get people to join each other and say, hey, this is happening in my neighborhood and it's either positive or negative. Can you help me out? Everything else sort of stems from that, right? So we start the block clubs and then we get them to do board ups and clean ups and things like that. And so the first couple of block clubs I attempted to start, very little luck. And then I started on this block, the one that we're on right now, the West Philadelphia block. And I started talking to residents and they were interested. I scheduled a meeting and 15 people came out. They said, hey, the alleys behind this block are terrible. Let's clean them out. I genuinely didn't think that we'd even make a dent. It was a cold, snowy February day, and 15 people came out, and they were all into it, and they were all really excited, and we cleaned out those alleys. Each nail you put into the board, I don't know, it, it makes the community look better, and I like that. I take pride, and I feel like, wow, I'm really helping progress my city, my community, my surrounding neighborhoods with the AmeriCorps work. You get to meet so many awesome people, some that have been here forever, some that have just moved here. I mean, there's families that have been here um, generation after generation. We're out in the community, and it's not just words, we're showing that we care. So people say things all the time, but when you're out and you're in the gist of things, you're, you're getting it done, they see us making a difference, and I think that, that just adds to the good of the program. We've already seen how AmeriCorps members in Michigan are helping kids learn, providing food to families in need, and reducing crime in urban neighborhoods. As we will see in the next video, Michigan's AmeriCorps members are also striving to end homelessness in our state by reducing the number of foreclosures and helping to keep Michigan families in their homes. Foreclosure is not just devastating to that particular family, but it's also devastating to the community that they live in housing values go down. We've seen cities that have had to drastically alter their budgets. The Michigan Foreclosure Prevention Corps is a group of 20 AmeriCorps members who are addressing the foreclosure issue in the state of Michigan. They are kind of the first person that a client sees when they need help with foreclosure. Um, they also do outreach um, and education about foreclosure in their local communities. Wow, it's been a fantastic opportunity for us. Paul Stanford, who is our current member, was our first member with the Foreclosure Prevention Corps. He joined us in October, and at the time, we did not actually have full-time foreclosure prevention services at Community Housing Network. So basically, my job here was to start the AmeriCorps, uh, well, start the foreclosure prevention program at Community Housing Network. They decided to hire an AmeriCorps member and also a housing counselor to begin the program. When the program first started here, we, we were getting flooded with a lot of calls. One of the first main people that called me, she contacted us and her share cell was you know, three weeks away. So what we did is we jumped right on it. We ended up getting, being able to get that share cell postponed. After that, she ended up receiving a permanent loan modification and it was very reasonable for her. So she, she called us, you know, thankful, thanked us, you know, and it's only a department of two of us. So she thanked both of us uh, individually, so it was really a great opportunity. And these AmeriCorps members answering the phones and going to community meetings and churches and knocking on doors really connected thousands of Michigan homeowners uh, facing a very scary future with foreclosure to the resources they need uh, at foreclosure counseling organizations. We could not work with as many people in foreclosure prevention as we do if were it not for our AmeriCorps member. Paul really handles all of the front end work and we are anticipating that Paul is going to join us in October 1st as a foreclosure prevention counselor down in our Wayne office. It's been a huge success for homeowners in uh, Oakland and Macomb counties and I'm excited to do the same for people out in Wayne County also. In addition to the Michigan Foreclosure Prevention Corps, there are other AmeriCorps programs working on housing throughout the state of Michigan. There was an apartment complex and the owner had not been paying his taxes to the city, um, but the, rent, the tenants were. So one day we got a call from the mayor saying that they, the city had shut off the water 
and the electricity for the apartment complex. It was a complete shock for the people living there because they did, you know, they've been paying everything on time. Like they thought, you know, they were just kind of getting by. And so I kind of took it upon myself to make sure that these people got rehoused and we got the funds for them. And um, it was a successful program, and a lot of those people are happily housed right now. Over a period of three months, um, we worked with her with uh, housing searches and trying to find someone that would rent to her with her limited income and getting her back into mental health services. And so we just recently housed her last week, and she was just so overjoyed. Yesterday we went to see her, we took her some small household items and she made the comment that God had dropped angels out of heaven to help her. And I said, no, we're not angels, we're just good people trying to help out. Each year, Michigan's AmeriCorps members from across the state gather together for a two-day service project where they demonstrate the power and dedication of AmeriCorps in Michigan. This year's event drew more than 300 members to Northern Michigan, where they got things done in Traverse City and the surrounding area. Well, today is part of a region-wide effort here in the Traverse City area where we have over 300 AmeriCorps members doing a, the Bruss Mobby Signature Service Project. They are removing some invasive species and putting some siding together and working at a playground at a local Traverse City school. Different and wonderful things throughout the Traverse City area. Today we're doing a couple of service projects for the weekend where uh, multiple AmeriCorps members are at different sites um, just helping in the community. And right now we're just uh, help, helping doing the landscape. I have a team of AmeriCorps from around the state um, and you know we all gave up uh, a couple days here to come serve um, at various sites around Traverse City. We're doing some landscaping, cleaning the gutters, um, cleaning the sidewalks, so they don't have to you know, do some, some maintenance tests. They can really focus on their primary mission of helping transition these families and individuals into stable homes. Well, what we did today is plant trees. And these trees have, um, the DNA of these trees have been modified to match the DNA of the trees that are already here so they have a wonderful chance of thriving. We are helping out with uh, Habitat for Humanity Home as part of AmeriCorps Week. Um, so we are helping to put siding on this home and paint the borders for our family to move in hopefully soon when the house is done. And we have a multitude of AmeriCorps members helping out at Camp Arbitrus. And uh, right now we're helping out with the uh, specific cabins as far as with siding and also uh, clearing a trail. Well, AmeriCorps, we have over a thousand AmeriCorps members providing service in a whole host of different activities um, around the state. They're working on foreclosure issues, senior issues, housing, homelessness, um, food, nutrition, um, neighborhood development, and they're providing a great deal of work that needs to be done in our state. Just giving back to the community. Uh, letting the younger individuals see that older people are involved in the community and, and just a uh, it's my give back for all uh, the older individuals that taught me certain lessons in life. This is my way of helping community. Well, I'm like one of the older members of AmeriCorps, so it is like the most awesome thing I've ever done. It's so rewarding because I'm giving back to my community. I feel like I'm giving back to my country. And it matters. Every day, what I do matters. And it's just a privilege.
As we've seen today, AmeriCorps members throughout our state are getting things done in Michigan, from gardening and food, education and housing, to environmental cleanups and neighborhood safety. AmeriCorps is a proven and effective strategy for creating a positive community change in our state. If you want more information about AmeriCorps as a solution, or if you're interested in serving as a member, visit michigan.gov volunteer. I'm Carolyn Bloodworth. Thank you for joining me on The Bright Side. To find more positive Michigan stories or to watch this episode again, visit brightsidetv.com. They would like for me to become a certified uh, Michigan uh, housing counselor also, so. Whoa, are you serious? That's so wow. awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So he's going to Cincinnati in two weeks. Yeah. Wow. AmeriCorps, I mean, without them, how would the program be as successful? Not a chance. Would you be able to reach as many people? Absolutely not. How has Ben been helping you? Is he teaching you or? Ben, yeah, Ben is, uh, Ben has been <laughs> very nice with us. AmeriCorps is a proven and effective strategy. And for... <laughs> <laughs>